Hello! Welcome to this video on box plots and independent samples t-tests in RStudio. We're going to begin by opening RStudio and walking through an example in which we're going to compare two different samples to each other, and these two samples will be compared on the amount of sleep that they're getting. Sleep is a very important variable for many college students, and so many college students have an interest in this variable. We're going to do this by creating a model of sleep that is a Gaussian distributed model of sleep. That is to say that we're going to pretend that the scores are approximately bell-shaped in their distribution. And as you might know from another video, we can get this from the command called rnorm, and that is a random normal distribution, and we can stick in the total amount of observations we hope to model. In this case, we're going to pretend that we've taken a sample of 1,000 people and that also these people were reporting on average seven hours of sleep plus or minus a standard deviation of one. Okay, so again, we're assuming that we're going to be randomly selecting from a bell-shaped or Gaussian or normal distribution. So our norm, 1,000 such samples are going to be taken from a Gaussian distribution that is centered at seven, at seven hours of sleep, and has a standard deviation of one hour of sleep. And we will put all of this into a variable that we might call something like school night sleep. That is to say that we might expect that this is what we would typically observe on a school night. This is when the college student has school on the next day, has class on the next day. And when I hit enter, you might notice over here in the environment, you see the beginning of this long, long list of 1,000 randomly sampled observations of school night sleep that are going to be in the neighborhood of seven plus or minus something like a standard deviation of one, okay? And then we can do this again for an independent group. We'll pretend that we had sampled yet 1,000 other college students, but this time we sampled them not on a school night, but on a weekend. And we might call this variable instead weekend sleep, and we'll pretend that they're doing a little bit better on this kind of sleep. They're getting more sleep on the weekend. We'll call it eight hours uh, on average uh, for weekend sleep rather than the seven that we had on a school night. We'll keep the standard deviation at the same. We'll keep the total number of observations again at 1,000. And again, we're picking these numbers randomly from a normal distribution, which is a Gaussian or bell-shaped distribution. And again, we can hit the enter key and we've got now 1,000 randomly generated observations from this distribution for the weekend sleep, okay? So the first thing that we'd like to do is just take a look at the data, get some intuition about how these two distributions of sleep scores are comparing to each other. And we're going to do that by way of a box plot, and the box plot command in R couldn't be easier. It's box plot. We type in box plot, we open a left parenthesis, and we stick in the variable name that we would like a, for which we would like a box plot, and we could say something like school night sleep. As we begin to spell school night sleep, R will find that for us and we can just click on it. Similarly, we can begin to type in weekend sleep and R will find that for us. We can type that in. So we have box plot and we stick in the two variables for which we would like a box plot. We can hit enter and immediately we get a plot over here in the plot section and you can see that the data set on the left is centered at around seven. That's going to be for our school night sleep. And unsurprisingly, we see an uptick uh, centered at around eight for our weekend sleep. So it was that simple to do a box plot. We could um, go one step further if we wanted to and create a normal distribution for these using a histogram. I could change the box plot command to histogram and I could separately plot the actual scores for the school night sleep and then separately again for the weekend sleep, but we've done that in another video. We'd like to move in this video ahead to a simple t-test. And again, the command for t-test really couldn't be simpler. We're going to have t.test, we'll open a left paren, and we'll stick in the two variables for which we would like a t-test. We'd like to do an independent samples t-test on weekend sleep versus school night sleep. I'll stick that in here. Okay, and we've got those two now entered, and we can click on go, okay, and immediately we get a Welch two-sample t-test coming out of R. And some critical information for at least an orthodox APA-style statement, we could say something like we have a t-test, and we have, as you can see here, 1,997.8 degrees of freedom, 
Okay, and that's going to be equal to a t value of minus 22.099. Okay, and the probability of that occurring is far less than 0 0.001. In fact, it's something like uh, a 2 with 15 or so zeros before it. So a very, very um, low probability of this occurring by chance if the null hypothesis were true. So this would be our, our standard statement. Um, you can imagine that we have a slight um, deviation from perfect equal variance here. For those of you who have done t-tests before, you know that there is an equal variance or an equal standard deviation assumption underlying these two. Uh, we can see that if we took the standard deviation, the SD, for each of the variables, it would probably be about one, but maybe not exactly one in each case. So we could put in the school night sleep. Okay, we can see that the standard deviation for there is pretty close to one, but not exactly one. Similarly, we can repeat this for weekend sleep, and we would expect the standard deviation, again, to be somewhat near one, but maybe not exactly one. So those two are almost exactly the same. Because they're not quite the same, we do pay a slight penalty in unequal uh, variance, but pretty close to what you would have expected. 1,998 would have been what you would have expected for 2,000 observations minus the two parameters that we're estimating. Okay, so there we have our statement about the t value and pretty equal variance looking approximately normal according to the box plots. And we can see too that the means are what you would expect, about 7 and 8. That's how we had modeled it. And we have a different score that is typically around 1. Uh, and here's the confidence interval for that. All of that information comes out of the simple t.test command in R. Okay, thanks for watching.